Morning, everyone. Welcome back to World Class Inventors. This is video 51 in the series, and today's date is July 3rd, 2024. So today's topic is going to be, what is a file wrapper? A file wrapper is a description or an acronym that the USPTO gives the correspondence that occurs between an inventor and the examiner. It's a compilation of the entire correspondence that occurs between the two parties. So what is the basis of the file wrapper? Well, it is the complete documentation of the inventor's thought and what occurred between the inventor's thoughts, his submissions, the various forms, the various fees that have been paid along the time, the examiner's responses to the applicant's submissions, and then of course, the applicant's rebuttal arguments to overcome the examiner's objections. And that's all it is. It's a record. Now, why is that important? Well, let's say that you have an idea that you really hooked on and you think it's worth pursuing. You think it's a valuable idea. And as you're doing research, you end up pulling up a patent that is very similar to yours, but you feel that you've made enough improvements over it that you can overcome the obviousness rejections, the 103s, and you can come up with a better set of claims to in effect go around that patent and secure your claims for a new novel invention which falls under 102. So if a patent has been granted, it becomes public record, the correspondence between yourself or the inventor and the PTO becomes public record and anybody can obtain a file wrapper. And the cost at this present moment is $60 takes them about 10 days to prepare it and they'll mail you out a CD ROM with the entire correspondence that occurred between the inventor and the office. You can get it in paper form printed out, but I think you're going to pay dearly for that. So you just get the CD ROM, you go through it and you can see the highlights and the low lights of this application process and it's a really good teaching tool for you guys who have never done this before to actually see what the forms are, what the fees are, what the thinking is, and the back and forth tug of war between the arguments that occur between the inventor and the examiner, because this is an argument process. This is a process of argumentation and a process of compromise between both parties because the examiner is viewing what you're putting up one way and you're trying to express how you want it your way. So there's a lot of friction, there's a lot of tension, there's a lot of argument. It doesn't get nasty, but it becomes very high level intellectual. So I had a slight snafu on the filing of my application, and I'll go into that in a later video. So I actually have two file wrappers. Now, customarily, the inventor will only have one, but I have two. And as I said, it's not a big deal. I have the record of both filings and I will get into that later. So I got this one file wrapper on my continuation in part filing, 
which is basically the refiling of a patent application that was already in the office. I didn't abandon it. I just submitted it again. And there's a reason for that. You see, when you file a patent, the patent office gives you two opportunities to overcome the objections of the examiner. If your application is somewhat realistic, somewhat in order, meaning you're dealing with a 102 rejection, which is based on obviousness, meaning the examiner says, no, I can't allow you to go further until you overcome the 102, because I think there are other patents out there that are similar to yours from a claim element standpoint. So you have to overcome that. So you could get a non-final rejection for that. And you're also more than likely going to get a non-final rejection for a 103, which is obviousness, meaning it should have been obvious to somebody who is skilled in the art of the same sort of patent that you filed that they could have thought of your idea beforehand. So those are two major objections you're going to receive. And then you're going to receive a third one, which is a 112, which has to do with your claims and the claim elements and the formation of your claims as they are tied to your specification, your drawings, your detailed preferred embodiments, your abstract, and your specification in general. So those are three non-final rejections that you are going to suffer on your very first go-round. Then you have two months to remedy those objections. And it can go as long as six months. I think they'll let you go out six months, but once you go past two, you have to pay late fees and you have to start buying time, meaning the third month, the fourth month. And then after six months, your application gets abandoned. So you have to respond within six months, but you'll pay for those additional four months time. So you get a non-final rejection and then you respond to that. And then the office, the examiner, will review your, your new submission, see what you've done, see your arguments. And that examiner at that time will either agree with you at, or not agree with you. If they agree with you, they will more than likely begin to formulate a notice of allowance, which means they're going to give you a green light. You can go ahead and they're going to grant you the patent. Most of the time, though, you're going to receive a final rejection. So this is not like baseball where it's three strikes and you're out. In the world of patents, it's two strikes and you're out. So it's very common after you receive a final rejection, you can do three things. You can abandon the patent application in its entirety. You can fill out the forms and basically file a rebuttal in the form of almost like a litigation or a lawsuit that will go in front of the patent review board that's timely, it's costly, and it's very high level intellectual argumentation that a review board is going to review whether you deserve to have the patent or whether the examiner made a mistake or whether they don't see it your way, either based upon the United States Code and the rules that are embodied in the Manual of Patent Examination. That's very contentious. You don't often do that. You really have to have a problem with the examiner to justify that move. So that's not good. You wouldn't do that. 
What you would normally do if you're still enamored with your idea, you still think it's viable, you still think you could get rich off of it, you file what is a continuation in part, a CIP. That is a brand new patent application that you're paying all those fees all over again, but you're taking your original application, you've learned what the examiner is looking for, what he or she is not looking for, you file the new application, and in that sense, you get a fresh bite at the apple. Again, if your application makes sense, you are entitled to a non-final rejection to which you can respond to, and then you may or may not get a final rejection. And you can do this as many times as you'd like. The point is, it takes time. It eats up the clock of your life. And it costs money. So these are things you need to know about. So getting back to my file wrapper, I wanted to make sure that everything was in order, that I didn't find anything really suspect or anything that was wrong in our correspondence. And the file wrapper is the guide for what goes on. Not your file that you have in your computer, not the file that your attorney has, but the file that the PTO has. That's the file that gets fought over in federal district court should you have an infringer or have to go through claim construction to defend your patent rights. So I ordered mine and I ordered it prior to the grant. There's only a few pages that are missing um, after the notice of allowance. And my file wrapper is approximately 375 pages long. And my other file wrapper is going to be nearly as long. So we're looking at six, 700 pages in a file wrapper. It's very expedient for you to know what a file wrapper is, what it does. And I would advise you pulling the file wrapper for any patent that you're seeking to go around or overcome with your invention. Okay, we'll get into more details at a later date. As always, God bless you. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.